Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Um, today's video is more about geometry for a standardized test. This is part two. I'll put a link to part one um, right up above me here as a card. Um, this is a foundations of math course where I'm going over standardized math test taking strategies and math applications. So it, it's pretty much designed so you do well on the ASVAB, arithmetic reasoning and mathematical knowledge portions of the ASVAB getting into the military exam. It is also for any union math entry exams, contractors exams, or any standardized math test. Chapter 14 was geometry where we went over lines, parallel lines, and triangles. This is gonna be chapter 15 where we're gonna go over circles and quadrilaterals. Okay, so in this video, chapter 15, uh, second part of geometry, we're gonna be talking about circumference of a circle, area, central angles, arc measure, arc length, just the different parts of circle, um, and how to answer some of those standardized math problems on circles. Then we're gonna move on to quadrilateral, four-sided figures, the different types, how to find perimeter and area. A lot of these standardized math tests are really based on vocabulary, even the math portion of it. So knowing all these words is really important. What I would do is I would have a notebook in front of me and I would take notes. If you're doing this whole course, label the top of the page, chapter one, chapter two, take all your notes, do the practice problems in there, and then you could refer back to them. The final exam for this course is gonna be in two parts. It's gonna be a practice uh, arithmetic reasoning exam, and then also a practice mathematical knowledge exam. Um, I'll kind of point out what the problems are, what chapter, if you don't know how to do them, what chapter you would go back to, what video to watch. And then I would do those problems before I do them, and then, and then check your work against mine. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and get started with the circle. A circle is defined as all points equal distant from a point. So this is a circle centered at point C. If I have all these little dots all the way around, they're all equidistant from that point, and that's what creates a circle. The line from the center of the circle to anywhere on the outside is called a radius. The line anywhere across the circle going through the center is called the diameter. So the diameter is always twice the radius. If I have another line that does not go through the center of the circle, that is called a chord, spelled C-H-O-R-D. And then the outside all the way around the circle is the circumference, and a piece of that is called an arc. Not a very well-drawn circle here, but that's an arc. To go all the way around a circle is 360 degrees, and you can refer to the arc measures in degrees as well. So if this interior angle right here at the center of the circle, if that is 20 degrees, then the measure of the arc is 20 degrees. So if I had a point here, A, and point B, a little lowercase m, measure of arc, A, B, is 20 degrees. Okay, here's another example. Let's say I have a circle centered at a point C. I have points A, B, and D on the circumference of the circle. These interior angles right here, these central angles, because they go to the center are 30 degrees and 40 degrees. And then if you were asked to find the measure of arc AB, it's saying how long is that as a measure, not a length, a length would be in inches or feet, a measure. So the measure of arc AB is the same as that central angle, is 30 degrees. What's the measure of arc DB? This is in the line segments, a little curve up above DB. Well, the arc measure right there is 40 plus 30, or 70 degrees. That's the minor arc. I could also talk about the major arc, and the major arc will go around this way right here. I know all the way around is 360, so what's the other arc length of DB? The major arc would be 360 minus 70, or 290 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the circumference. Circumference in a circle is the length all the way around the outside. So the equation for circumference, capital C, is equal to two times the number pi times r radius. Two times the radius is the same thing as the diameter. Remember we said that's the radius, all the way across is the diameter. So circumference could also be written as two radiuses or pi times two radiuses or two 
radius is the diameter. So another way to write circumference is pi times diameter. The circumference of this circle right here is going to be, I could use either equation 2 pi r, 2 times the radius 3 is 6, or I could just do diameter, which is 6, and call it 6 pi. If this is inches, the circumference is going to be in inches as well. This number right here, this is a Greek letter right here, pi, and it represents a ratio. So it is a ratio of the circumference divided by diameter, right? So you could leave this thing, circumference is equal to 6 pi inches, or you might know that pi is approximately equal to 3, or if you want to get a little more exact, 3.14. Usually these are multiple choice problems, so if you're just using 3, you'll be able to figure out what it is. So you could leave it as 6 pi, or you could do 6 times the number of pi, 3, and get 18 approximately. Or you could do 3.14 times 6, and get it to a few more decimal places. 6 times 4, 24, carry the 2, 6, 7, 8. 6 times 3, 18. This is still an approximation, but it's a lot more accurate than that. Let's go back and talk a little bit more about pi. So here's my equation. Circumference is equal to pi times diameter. If I want to get this pi by itself, I could divide both sides by diameter, and these things will cancel, and I can see this Greek letter pi is a ratio of circumference to diameter. So it doesn't matter how big the circle is. It could be the size of the globe. If you were to take the distance all the way around the Earth and divide it by a line going straight through the Earth, it's still going to be 3.14. So any circle, when you take its overall circumference, divided by its diameter, it gives you this kind of magic number pi. All right, let's take a look at an arc length, not a measure. Um, and that's going to be in inches or feet or a linear unit. So we know that circumference of this whole circle right here is equal to 2 pi r or 8 pi. So that's the circumference of the circle. That's going to be feet because I got a 4 foot radius. If this is 90 degrees, the measure of this arc would be 90 degrees. But the length, the length of that arc, let's label this point A and B, the length of arc AB is going to be the overall circumference of 8 pi times a ratio of what I want over the total. Well, what I want is 90 of a total 360 degrees, right? So that's going to reduce to 1 fourth, right? 90 goes into here once, into here four times. Then I have 8 pi times 1 divided by 4, and that's just going to leave me with 2 pi. So the length of this arc right here is equal to 2 pi. Again, you can multiply that out to get approximately 2 times 3, 6, or 2 times 3.14, um, 6.28. And again, that's feet. It's a linear measurement. So that's how you find the length of an arc versus the measure of an arc and the circumference of the whole circle. All right, we've talked about circumference, central angles, arc measures, and arc lengths. Now let's talk about the area of a circle. Area of any circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Remember, order of operations is exponents before multiplication. So it's really important you square that radius first. So find the area of that circle and also find the circumference of that circle. Pause the video and do that, and then I'll do it. So the area of that circle is going to be equal to that number pi, 3.14, times radius squared. 4 squared. Squared means times itself. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 pi. That's sometimes a good answer. It might be left like that. That's actually called an exact value. I could stick a 3 in there. 3 times 16 is 48. And what I have right here is I have feet times feet where I square my radius. So this is square feet. Again, this is an approximation. I could do it a little more accurately by going 16 times 3.14. 6 times 4 is 24. Carry the 2, 6, 7, 8. 6 times 3, 18. One time, I got a placeholder. 1 times 4. 1 times 1. 1 times 3. Add them together. 4, 12. Carry the 1, 9, 10. 3, 4, 5. 
And then I got two decimal places, they're 50.24. These are all correct answers. 16 pi is a correct answer. 48 square feet is approximate answer when I just use three. 50.24 is a more exact answer, but it's still an approximation. Uh, and then that's gonna be the area of the circle. The circumference of that circle is two pi r. So I gotta find the radius times two, eight, eight times pi. I can multiply that out to get 24 or uh, times 3.14 to get a little bit more accurate. Okay, here's a practice ASVAB math problem. Uh, this is a pretty easy one. What is the diameter of the following circle? Well, it gives you a radius and you know the diameter is two times the radius or 160. This is a good problem because it really points out it's really not that much math. It's really about vocabulary and knowing the parts of a circle. Okay, here's another practice problem. What is the circumference of the following circle? Remember, circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So we're going to take that radius of 4, double it to get 8 pi. Um, none of those answers there are close. We'll just do 8 times 3 to get 24. And we're going to look up here. It's going to be a little bit more because we just rounded it. But we can see it's got to be 25.12. There's nothing even close to 24 except for that one. If we were, in fact, to do the 3.14 times 8, we could see it's going to be exactly that. 8 times 4, 32. Carry the 3, 8, 9, 10, 11. Carry the 1, 24, 25, 25.12. Again, you don't have to do that long multiplication um, because if you scan the answers first, you could see that. All right, let's move on to quadrilaterals, uh, the different types of them, perimeter and area of them. Um, quad, just like riding a quad, has four wheels. Quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. There are a lot of different quadrilaterals. If you know that the angles are perpendicular, meaning that there are right angles in there, that means all four of them have to um, be right angles. And with that the case, then it's going to be a rectangle. If I know that all four sides are congruent, meaning that they're the same length, so usually a mark with a tick and a tick, so all four sides are the same length and the angles are right, then that's going to be a square. It's still a quadrilateral, it's still a rectangle, it's more specifically a square. Also an important thing to note as well is that all four angles of a quadrilateral always add up to 360 degrees. So we've got a rectangle, a square. If I have a set of parallel sides, and a lot of times I put arrows on there to say parallel, and it's a four-sided figure like that, that's called a trapezoid. Again, all four angles are gonna add up to 360. If I know this side and this side are congruent, that's gonna make it an isosceles trapezoid because those two are congruent, isosceles, and then trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides. I could find the area of any rectangle by doing base times height, so if this is 10 times 5, the area of this one would be 50. If these were inches and inches, this would be square inches. So I have inches times inches, and that's what gives me my square area. In the square right here, if I know one side is 7 feet, well, I know this side's the same. So the area of this is 49 square feet. Area of this trapezoid, the way you actually do area of a trapezoid is you got to drop an altitude in here. But a lot of times you don't have that altitude. But if they give you the pieces um, of the top and the bottom and you know it's isosceles and you could do Pythagorean theorem on that uh, right triangle to figure out some of the pieces and parts. So the area of a trapezoid is you're going to take the one base, even though it's the top, it's still called the base, and the bottom base and add them together and divide by two. So you average the two bases, so you go six, plus 10, those would be given, divided by two. Six plus 10, 16 divided by two is eight. That's actually called the median, the middle of that trapezoid. So the median is eight. And then you would find that median and multiply it by the height. So if three were given, you would do a median of eight times a height of three, and that would give you 24. Again, if these were centimeters, then this would be square centimeters because you're talking about the area the amount 
uh, of area inside that shape. So that's how you find area of a few different um, quadrilaterals. Perimeter, you're going to add up all the sides. So let's see if we can find the perimeter. Why don't you find the perimeter of all three of these? And pause the video, find the perimeter, and then I'll do it. Okay, so here's the perimeter of the first one. You know, this is 10, this is 10, this is 5, this is 5. 10 plus 10, 20, plus 5 and 5 is 30. So the perimeter here is 30. On the square, all four sides are 7. So you go 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, or 7 times 4, and a perimeter of 28 feet. Singular units, because you're talking about the length of a line going around the outside of that shape. So you got seven feet plus seven feet gives you 14 feet. Versus when you're talking about area, you have seven feet times seven feet. You gotta multiply that whole thing together. So you do feet times feet to get square feet. Okay, board's cleaned up a little bit. So this is six, this is 10. I'm gonna draw in another altitude. That's three, that's three. If this is 10, if, if this is six and this is 10, that means this and this together are four. Right? So you would have 2 plus 6 plus 2 to get that 10. I know that because it was an isosceles trapezoid. The area is pretty easy. We found that median 16 divided by 2, 8 times 3, 24. So our area was 24. But a perimeter, we got to find this length right here. So we got to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That's in the last chapter. But if I know it's a right triangle, I could do 2 squared one leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to that hypotenuse. I don't know what it is, so I'll call it C, is equal to C squared. Two squared, four, plus three squared, nine. Four and nine is 13, is equal to C squared. Square root of both sides, and C is equal to square root of 13. That's gonna be a little bit between three and four, right? Three times three is nine, four times four is 16, so somewhere between three and four. I'm actually just going to leave it as root 13. But if that's root 13, this is root 13. So then I'm going to have the perimeter around the outside. I'm going to have the 10 plus the 6, 16, plus root 13, plus root 13. That means I got two of them. So plus 2, root 13. So that's the perimeter around the outside of the whole thing. You could leave it in square root form like that. If there were a multiple choice answers, you would, might have to approximate it. Let's say it's halfway between three and four, right? Three is nine, four is 16, so let's say halfway. So if this is about three and a half, three and a half times two is seven, right? Seven and 16 is approximately 23. So if it's multiple choice answer, you're gonna grab something that's close to 23. A lot of little pieces here. You got to know your triangles on these um, trapezoids right there. All right, I think I'm going to wrap it up right here. I think we'll start the final exam next week. We'll do ASVAB reasoning test first and then mathematical knowledge as a second part. And I'm really hoping this course will help you solidify foundational math skills so that you can progress in math and do well on any standardized math test. I know I say this a lot. But math actually is not hard. It is just so progressive, so based on previous knowledge that if you got a few holes in your foundation, the house crumbles down. So the intent of this whole course um, is really to fill in those holes so you could build a beautiful home on top of them with a, on a really nice, solid foundation. Well, I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions on the math, please um, ask them in the comments. I'll get, I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you.